Well, good morning. Welcome to worship as we continue to gather in person via Facebook Live and uh, via the radio and also on our video feed on our website. So glad to have you all today. Um, just a couple of announcements today. We do have annual reports available to you, uh, for you. If, uh, since we didn't, we weren't able to have an annual meeting, we actually put the report together. Uh, those will be sent out to you uh, via electronically, but if you'd like to pick one up, they are available on the welcome table as you leave today. Also, the, uh, the new Christ in Our Home booklets are available as well if you'd like to pick one of those up. In our prayer list, uh, we inadvertently uh, uh, missed taking Joy Stevenson's name off the prayer list. We uh, did list her. Uh, many of you know that she did pass away this week. Uh, so we have listed her family in our prayer list, but uh, we uh, forgot to take her off the uh, prayer list for praying for her. She's with Jesus and uh, certainly would love our prayers, but uh, doesn't need them as much anymore. But our prayers do go out to her family. Um, once again, welcome. Glad that we can be together today. And let us begin with the confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together, let us ever walk with Jesus.
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with you. you. You have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore... If you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is, we're going to sing the refrain together, and you guys sing the bolds as well, okay? I think, right? Yeah? We're going to try this? All right. We are God's people and the sheep 
sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Our second reading this morning is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak at the right time when Christ died for the ungodly, indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we are still were sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Ask, therefore, the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I have several friends who were adopted as children. Some of them don't know very much about their lives before adoption, except perhaps that they came from a certain part of the country or a different country altogether. Some of them knew their birth parent during their growing up years. Others have had no idea who or where that person is and where they are now. And of course, some have taken up the task of searching out the person or persons who gave them birth. No matter the circumstances, people who are adopted often have taken to celebrating an additional special day in their year. Each day it comes around. Like a birthday, but different. 
adopted children and adults get to celebrate what they call Gotcha Day. It's the day of the year when their adoptive parents signed on the dotted line and claimed this child as their own. It's the day when the adoption was made official in the eyes of the law, but also when the titles Mom and Dad and my child could be used without, without any sort of contingency. Singer-songwriter Stephen Curtis Chapman has a song about adoption, and in this song he describes not only the longing of a child to be in a place where they are wanted and loved, but also the longing of the parent to bring that child into their arms, into their family. The song goes like this. And somewhere while you were sleeping, someone else is dreaming too, counting down the days until they hold you close and say, I love you. And like the rain that falls into the sea, in a moment, what has been is lost in what will be. When love takes you in. The part of the story from Exodus that we heard read today is Israel's gotcha day. It's, part, it's the part of the story when God officially says to these people who have been brought out of slavery and put on a path toward a promised land of milk and honey who have been adopted by God. When God officially says, I have been counting down the days until I can hold you close and say, I love you. Today, love takes you in. Treasured possession, priestly kingdom, holy nation. These are the words that God uses to describe young Israel. Like a new mom and dad might say, sweet baby girl or precious little boy. Come and make your home with me. There is love, belonging, purpose, and much joy to be found as we journey together. Whether the birthday of a child, the day they come home with you and sleep under the same roof, or a gotcha day, there is reason to celebrate. And yet not every day that follows is to be remembered and celebrated equally. There are and will be days when you want to send that child back, when you don't know if your love is going to run out. I can remember my mother using my middle name. And if ever my mother used my middle name, I knew that something was wrong. More specifically, I knew that my mother had found out about something that I already knew that I had done wrong. Like the time she found the matchbooks that had been taken out of the kitchen cupboard and used to create little bonfires behind the shed in the backyard. Or the time when I cut my sister's hair just because I was angry that I had been made to stay at home while my friends were playing outside. These are not the times that one thinks about when love takes you in, and yet it is exactly why families have rules and why people make promises of fair living with one another when they agree to share their lives with one another. God is no different. If you obey my voice, if you keep my commandments, God says, then you shall belong to me and I to you. Perhaps this makes God seem judgmental. Perhaps we complain to God, your rules are too mean. I don't like your decision to make me do this or that. Are we any different than any child who has ever lived? But let us not lose sight of the fact that it is God who has chosen us. 
the Israelites as they are rescued from slavery in Egypt, and us as we are rescued from sin and death through the waters of baptism. God has claimed us. God has given us a home. God has said, I gotcha. And nothing will ever break that bond of love. Which is why Jesus so clearly grieves for the people around him who seem to not know that they belong. That they are chosen and claimed by the God who loves them. Jesus describes them as, as sheep without a shepherd. Today he might say, children who do not know yet that they've been adopted. And in his grief, Jesus teaches his disciples to be the hands and the feet and the voices of God, to be the shepherds who seek out the lost sheep, to claim those souls who are lost, and on behalf of God, give them a gotcha day. Who are the people in our world today who are sheep without a shepherd? It's not so easy to determine we might say that the poor are those who are sheep without a shepherd, and, and to the extent that the poor need community, often that they are neglected of, that can be true. And yet I have met many who are poor in the wealth of this world, who yet celebrate every day the blessings that come from their mutual love of Jesus. Perhaps the grieving, sometimes, sometimes they seem like sheep without a shepherd. And to, again, to the extent that, that the grieving are sometimes pushed off in our society and left to grieve alone, that can be true. And yet, many who grieve can also draw great strength in knowing that God holds them close and gives them comfort. The disabled, the less intelligent, the people who act kind of strange, although we really don't know why. These, these are sheep without a shepherd, right? Not always. And actually not usually. Most people who are differently abled than us are quite confident in, in the lives that they've been given from God. And if you think that it's people who don't have the same religion as you and me, who are not followers of Jesus, that these are sheep without a shepherd, well, you might just notice that Jesus doesn't seem to be that concerned with those who experience God through different traditions. He tells his disciples not to go outside their borders when they go to proclaim the good news to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's not other religions that Jesus is worried about. Who are those that Jesus says are sheep without a shepherd? The answer, I think, lies in not categorizing others, as we are so apt to do, but rather in looking into our own lives and considering who are the people that we have ignored. Who are the people who we have chosen not to listen to? Who are the people in our world that we consider less worthy of our time and energy and so live without the hope and the trust that they matter to God? I said a few weeks ago, and I say again today, that the protests that we've seen over the past several weeks are a result of a failure to listen. These are protests against systemic racism and injustice within our communal structures of setting up rules and regulations that we all claim to live by. And these protests seek to demand a reckoning of the promise of equality in our society. This collective voice that, is, that has risen up from the streets and cities and towns and villages across our country are a result of a failure to listen 
Especially that those of us who, because of our skin color, or wealth, or job, or ancestry, enjoy a favored status in our world, have turned a deaf ear to those in our world whom we deem less welcome to sit at the table of manifest destiny. We claim to be a society that lives under the rule of law and of mutual respect for one another. We claim to be a people that, that values above all else that all people are created equal. And yet we have broken those promises. We have not kept the rules for ourselves in the same way that we have enforced them for others. This is what Jesus calls sheep without a shepherd. That shepherding ourselves has resulted in a lack of justice, a deafness towards suffering, and a blindness when we are called to love one another. When God, when God claimed Israel all those years ago in the Sinai Desert, when God said, you are my chosen people, God knew that the road ahead was going to be met with difficulties. It didn't take long for Israel, in fact, to expose its tendency towards selfishness and, and superiority over others. And so God said, if, if you keep my covenant. Parents know that the day will come when their precious son cuts the hair of their little sister. Or plays with matches behind the shed in the backyard. And so parents... Parents of adopted children and biological ones too say, if, if you don't break the rules. And in our world today, our brothers and sisters are saying that the crimes of racism and disregard for the lives of black and brown people and others are real. And so they say, if, if you stand for what you say you believe in. Let us be shepherds to one another. Let us welcome each other into arms of grace and love. Let us adopt one another as brothers and sisters and claim those gotcha celebrations with one another. Let us be the people of God whom God once proclaimed a holy nation. Let us hold up for one another the covenant of justice and equality. Let us shepherd between ourselves in such a way that, that holds equal value between the black and the white sheep. The goal is not perfection. God doesn't ask us to be perfect. Rather, God asks us to be faithful faithful to one another as we move forward from our gotcha day and into the complicated mess of life that is our relationship with one another in God's family. And when we fail, and when we are harassed and helpless, let us look to the one shepherd who can guide us toward and into the promised land together. Amen.
as together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on your, in your bulletin on page 11. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rises. Amen. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Great Shepherd, you have claimed us as your own, and we are the sheep you hold dear. Give us the same home and comfort and love that you give all people, and teach us to share everything that we have. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Guide us towards justice and equality. Let us hear the voices of our neighbors when they cry out for peace. Give us strength and courage to reform our lives and our society that we all that we that all may be one. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Bless the servants among us who care for the sick, the lonely, and the lost. Give nurses and therapists, hospice, hospice workers and counselors, teachers, coaches, and mentors the grace to stretch out their hearts toward those for whom they care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. We lift up to you, great healer of every ill, the suffering people in our world, those who are sick, those who grieve, those who long for comfort. Hold those, especially Louise, Bill, Terry, Shane, Roland, Janet, Bob, and Sue, Beverly, Tia, Linda, Ada, and Tom, Doug and Heidi, Dale and Bev. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the Holy Ones who have blessed our lives and now live eternally with you, especially Joy and, and Gerald. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to take our place with all the saints in light. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, we will pass the plate today in our uh, in-person worship. There are plates available in the commons if you brought your offering, or you may continue to mail that in to our office, or give online through our offering portal on our website. Thank you for your generosity your compassion and your love for the mission of this community and for those in our world who are in need.
squeeze that. <clears throat> and growth. All creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever Amen. the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go today, just a reminder that our welcome hosts will usher you out, starting from folks in the back. Uh, we'll go ahead and move ourselves all the way out. I don't think the rain has started again today, so outside is probably a wonderful place to be able to greet one another and to share a few words of, of peace with one another. Let us sing as we go, however, of our beautiful Savior.
Christ is with you. Amen.